Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore the wide world of pens and share it with you. I uh, attended the Commonwealth Pen Show, which is located in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. The second year that I've been there, I skipped a year, and then obviously in 2020, the show was not scheduled in 2020 for various reasons, which we're all very familiar with. I had in mind when I went to the show, because I think it's important to have an idea when you go to a show about what you want to accomplish. If it's your first show, it's just attending the show probably, but for me, it's I always try to have a focus. So the focus I had was I had a certain amount of cash with me and I wanted to buy one pen. I'd have liked to have gotten a, a kind of rare Parker dual fold in, in the new series. I like the one that Wassy Squirrel got. Uh, the second thing I was thinking about was just another kind of pen in that what I might consider price range. Hey, Arco Celluloid would be nice, you know, but those pens were not there at the show. The crowd was pretty good in the beginning. The doors opened promptly at 9 o'clock. Here's, here's a, what it looked like at about 9.30, quarter to 10. So you may ask, what was my first purchase at the pen show? And uh, you may be surprised, but this is my first purchase. The largest bottle of Schaefer ink I've ever seen in permanent red. And it came in a box. And has a nice description on the bottom. So that was $15. That was my first purchase. I was able to park about 15 feet away from the back door, so it was easy for me to buy something heavy and put it in the car and then come back and continue shopping. The next stop that I made was to an artist. He was in the corner. And I bought three of his books. This is the first one he published. And I just loved the artwork. Here's a way to get in touch with him. We'll give you a link in the description so you can go directly to that site. And these books are just filled with tons of his sketches, all done with fountain pens. And like I said, it's something I can enjoy. I enjoy paging through the book. And I have three of them. It was a great deal for three books. And as we see, they're autographed by the artist. He has a nice little symbol he puts here. He puts the date and the temperature in Fahrenheit. So it was my second purchase. I got the three books and of course I went back out to my car to put the heavy books away. Nathan Tardis was there with uh, Noodler's Inks and he's there at the show all the time. He does a video. I'll put a link into it encouraging you to go to the show. Everybody who signed in got a free bottle of ink. And that's another little nice gift, but most pen shows you seem to get a bottle of ink. And of course it's labeled Blue Lobsters and Whales. It's a nice blue ink. And when I do a full review of these four noodler inks that I have, you'll get to appreciate each of their characteristics. Of course I got uh, Napalm, Dragon's Napalm I think. Dragon's Napalm. An ink that I've kind of always been interested in. So I got three of the three ounce bottles for $30. It was a special deal. $12 if you bought one, but then if you bought three, it was $10 a bottle, which is me is great. No shipping. And 
Yeah, it's one of those deals you might get. Here's Lexington Gray. As you can see, I spilled the ink on the label because it's very full and I didn't pay attention. And the last one is kind of an interesting special ink. I think a lot of people have been interested in getting. I'm not exactly certain what the availability is, but it's a kind of really dark purple. So there's where the inks. But you see in front of you two pens, and I only bought two pens. I didn't find the ones that I was particularly looking for, so therefore these two pens interest me, and I made the purchase. I walked around a lot, looked at a lot of pens, until I found the two that I ended up purchasing. So I do not have an Armando Simone pen. This one was sitting in a drawer. He had a number of these of different colors, but this yellow one was the one that attracted my attention. And I think it's a great looking resin. The elements are all nice. Nice little emblem there at the top of the cap. Rollerball clip. Nice and springy. Nice ink window. Nice uh, Chateauian C, beautiful nib, and it's a broad nib. So when I went back to the table, and this was still on the table, I purchased it. The price was $145. Since I knew nothing about the pen, I did not know how good of a price that was. So these sell on the Armando Simone uh, website for about $200. You can buy them on eBay for about $170. So $145 is a decent price, and the pen feels good. It has that quality level to it. So we'll do a full review of that in the near future. So this pen definitely attracted my attention because I've never seen anything like it. And that's a little label that the seller had on there identifying the lot number. And there's a description. And it came in this nice box and labeled new old stock $110 and it came with a bottle of ink. So I had not heard of this Italian pen maker before. It has both um, materials, uh, electrical and mechanical in it. <laughs> Perfect. And now you're into fountain pens. Now I'm into fountain pens. I was when I was at school. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You're, you're welcome. It's, it's, just, it's just a video for my YouTube channel. So. And with a mask, nobody's going to know who you are, so it works out okay. But they will notice you taking the pen and walking off, you know. We'll have you on record. <laughs> so I looked them up. And when I do my full review, I'll go into details. This pen has real heft to it. It's over 60 grams in weight. Pop-off cap, which really is done well. We see a metal section, which is not a... I'm not a fan of that, but it, it has a nice texture to it, so I don't think it'll be slippery at all. It's a number five nib, which is kind of disappointing with the size of the pen. And it does have a little bit of an emblem there, which is like a feather. Interesting uh, feet on the back. No other identification on the pen. So this may or may not be a Phil Cowell, but you may ask why was I so attracted to it? Because it resembles my... Waterman's Silver Filigree, which I haven't yet done a video review on. The pen was gifted to me by one of my pen viewers, the most incredible gift I've, I've received. And I had to take it to the Fountain Pen Hospital to do some minor uh, repairs to it. So now it, it's ready, and I don't know whether I'm gonna, how much I'm gonna polish up the Silver Filigree, but you can see it's kind of nicely chased, as Waterman's are known for. But the similarity is there, so that's why I got that. The other reason why I went to the pen show, obviously to see Nathan, which I did, and I had a short conversation with him. Uh, I asked him what was the most fun he's had recently, and he discussed uh, a hunting trip that he did. And His uh, freezer is now full of a winter supply of venison, so he was very happy about that. I've talked to him about pens before and, and things of that nature, so I enjoy, you know, hearing stories from uh, the different uh, people that were at the show. I met a number of uh, my video viewers. I was wearing the yellow hat that I, I said I would wear, so that was great. And one of my viewers, 
gifted me these three pens and I was blown away. A Jinhao 100 in brown check. I have one in blue check. So now I have one in brown check. A Moon Man Wong Kai in the blue finish, which is definitely very attractive. And this pen, which I didn't even know existed, called a gold golden writ and it's a sketch writer so this is made by uh, Jerry Artorama which I bought a, a pen uh, drawer from which I haven't done a review on I just haven't been motivated and it has a great wait for it a great number five Bach titanium nib which I, I love. And the pen is very interesting, very well done. Screw to post. So obviously we'll be looking at those in a little bit more detail later on. So there was one other reason why I went to the Boston Pen Show is I had a Waterman silver overlay pen that needed to lever repaired. Here's kind of an example of what it looked like. I didn't take a picture of it before I, I took it there, but you know, I know what it looks like. And there's a gentleman there that I obviously wanted to see. And it was Andy. I met Andy at many pen shows before, and he is the expert. Any type of work on metal overlay pens. So here's a little short video of, of Andy. Um, talking about his pens and I'm showing some of them and the ones I focus on are ones where he actually made parts doing lost wax castings and other things so let's listen to Andy talk to one of the people that stopped by his table section out and cut a, a little tiny sliver off the section where it butts to the pen and then it goes into the into the, uh, the uh, pen father and tightens down better Hmm. On, on the M800, that would not be an easy thing to do. No, you couldn't do that on an M800. Yeah. No. Well, he's thinking Pelican. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Oh, but no, same concept. That's the good one. <laughs> oh, I, mean, yeah. I, have, uh, I have Pelicans at yeah. home. And Pelicans are the same, the same problem. The, the, uh, the, the section and the cap butt very, very tightly. And if, if the threads are worn, uh, and, and this one, it was like that new, it just, it, it just won't, the cap won't screw on unless you get that, oh, you get this bit here and then, and then it goes on. Well, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Um, the, the threads, the threading wasn't matched up good. It I mean, wasn't it's not matched perfect. up, yeah. And you yeah. know, the thing is, when the things are mass produced, oh, yeah. you end up with, um, which those are, yeah. You end up with problems. In the, the other reason to go to a pen show is to have a nibmeister work on your nibs. And at that show was uh, Joshua Lax. Uh, I'll give his contact information above in the description. Here's what his website's like. And, and I've known Josh for a number of years. He's part of the Big Apple Pen Club. And him and I have gone back and forth uh, many times. He's ground a lot of nibs for me. Uh, so I knew he was going to be there. I didn't have a particular nib that needed to be ground, but here's a little video of Josh working with uh, someone who stopped by who needed their nib tuned. And at the end, obviously, it was a happy pen owner who now had a pen that wrote the way they liked. I got a notebook of Ayushi paper, which is a new paper from India, but I got a, uh, a sideways because I need a drone model. You know, we have a COVID, I told it, the eight by nine sideways with power in my drone place. So that was the Boston Pen Show. I spent about uh, 
five hours there. I took a little break for lunch. I ate lunch in the car. I brought some, a bagel with uh, some cream cheese on it, so that was good for me. I always enjoy going to pen shows. I met and talked with a lot of people. And one of the things that surprised me is Apple Boom was there promoting their Broomfield store in Boston. And the store is moving. And uh, they were in there, going to be in their new address the Monday after that show on Sunday. So they were handing out these little flyers and they were encouraging you to come and visit the new location and get a $10 credit. Uh, Josh was there. We had a nice conversation. I just appreciate what they do supporting the pen community. And they really are dedicated and all they had was these flyers. They didn't bring any pens or any inks or anything. They just had the flyers and meeting some of the many pen nerds that were at the show. So that was them. I always like people selling some nice vintage. And this gentleman had a deco band with a really incredible flexi nib in it. Price was $300, which I thought was a great price. And Charm City Pens, I, I've dealt with them a couple times at different shows, so that was really great. And of course, these guys are the creme de la creme. They've been around forever. They have a great website. You look for vintage. And these are also the people that sell those nice corrugated trays that you see a lot in my videos. So again, I try to promote to people in the business. There's a lot of excellent people. I can't promote all of them, but I do the best that I can. So let's close with another overview of the crowd. And hopefully if, if, if you've been to pen shows, you can enjoy what this one was like. I thought I would call it on the small side. Maybe 30 uh, vendors were there. A good variety. Uh, really a focus on vintage. But there was enough new pens there to uh, keep your interest if that's what you were in, in, interested in. Uh, hopefully you can get to a pen show sometime if that's something you want to do. I know geographically it's hard because there's not a lot of them and they probably are, could be some distance from you. This one was easy for me because I was visiting an old college friend in southern New Hampshire. So it was a little bit over an hour and a half drive to the Penn Show. That wasn't bad. If I drove from my house, it would have been uh, close to three and a half to four hours. So I made out well and got back to New Hampshire for a nice uh, dinner with my friends. I hope... This video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, enjoying whatever you do in this hobby. I know all of us do different things, sketch, draw. I mean, Scott Jones certainly is one of the more incredible people that can do magic with a fountain pen and drawing, and he uses a lot of vintage pens in his work. Yeah, you know, and having a little conversation with Nathan Tardis is great, so I can go on and on and on, but no need for that. So go out there, Enjoy your pens. You know, provide me any comments you'd like. I mean, I think that's great. I, if you something I haven't covered on this show that you think I should have, let me know. I don't have any plans uh, for another show. It might be Philly. It might be Long Island. There's questions about whether the Long Island show will happen or not because of Hostra and COVID and restrictions. As far as I know, I think the Philly pen show is on. And I've been there a few times. Oof. So we've reached the end. And we're going to say bye until the next video. As you can see, I have a lot of material to cover. And of course, it's never the end. I got this pen when I got back. Came from England. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to wait for the video. But it's related to a pen I recently reviewed that was red. It's an earlier model. Now it's officially the end. Be safe, stay happy, share the love. Bye.